strike of a light pole. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. Your micro, I'm hard body like Tyco. Heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper. Hypnotic to the thirst. I'm pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. And welcome back to Ratchet and Clank, Up Your Arsenal Developer Commentary. I am Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And in this episode, we are once again back at the Starship Phoenix. I'm starting to detect a pattern here, Tony. Mike, we are going to the Starship Phoenix a lot. This is, it's madness. I don't know what's going on. Actually, I do know what's going on. The Starship Phoenix was Insomniac's first attempt at doing a, a, a hub level type design, uh, where you... You know, after after levels, you keep coming back, and then the hub sort of evolves over time. It was a kind of design that didn't really exist before games like Grand Theft Auto and, and stuff like that. So we were sort of trying to catch up with the times by putting this in, I think. Pathetic! I could obliterate a lot of you, and they wouldn't even mention it in Supervillain Weekly! True, sir, but you'd have to... I like the epileptic seizures hologram effect we have going on there. Yep, that, that, that's the uh, dynamo effect, I think. That's for you. <laughs> Gotta love that Dr. Nefarious. <laughs> Lawrence! Al, come in! You know who you gotta love, though? Big fucking Al. <laughs> You, I put it to you, Tony. Big Al, best character in the Ratchet universe, period. Is that a question? Well, I mean, a statement? besides Dr. Nefarious. Like, best best non-Dr. Nefarious character. I don't... I don't... I, I don't feel as strong about Big Al as you do. I got no problems with him. But I don't have as much love for Big Al as you have. Big Al is the first non-player character you ever meet in a Ratchet & Clank game, besides the plumber. So I yeah. guess that totally removes my entire argument. <laughs> He's the first character if you discount all the other characters. In Dude, this is this is uh this is the level with the Courtney Gears thing in it. Is it? Yeah. Excellent. We're, is we're this going, what we're heading to next? We're going to Dax next, yeah. Oh, there's so much going on at Dax. A level that was actually named after Daxter of Jack and Daxter fame. Was it actually? Yes it was. That was deliberate. There were uh I think a few uh, Jack and Daxter, uh, what are they, Easter eggs in this game. Not as many as last game, though. On the brink of galactic domination, or is this super weapon? Oh, this level. There was there's so many trials in getting this level done. <laughs> what? So did you code this level? Is this all you? Uh, not all me. It was me and Moo. This was Moo and my first collaboration. And uh, designed by Colin, I think, right? Designed by Colin, the and uh, immortal this was Colin this is Wilson. level where he actually get the enemies that he just, just he's like they're giant flying tors robot torsos <laughs> and that's all they are. He made no pretense about it this time. None, and he was just like that's what they are, that's what they're called, uh, and they shoot at you, and that's that's the enemy. Oh, dude, we're doing the VR training now. Oh, do you remember this? Uh, I mean, what? This is the Dynamo Swing Shot training. Wow, okay. You don't remember this level? I don't remember this. Yeah, I think I did some designs for this level. Uh, because the hacker was involved and stuff like that. And I think every single iteration of every design I did for this level was rejected. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's time for the hacker. It's time for the hacker. Oh man, this gadget is so me. This is very you. Yeah, I designed this, I coded it, I did everything but the art, pretty much. Let's hear you talk about the hacker then. Oh god, I have to talk about the hacker and solve the hacker at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's this what you gonna, gotta do. This is gonna be tricky. So, uh, the the obvious basis for this was Tempest, right? Okay. Uh, I just, I thought, okay, let's rip off Tempest, but instead of having a little uh, cursor that you move around a, a shape, let's move the shape around and see sort of what we can do with that. And it started off where it was just these fire particles, the ones you have to shoot, and that wasn't very interesting. Uh, so 
we decided to make it, or I decided, I guess, to make it based on collecting the green things instead. But uh, as it turns out, just like with everything else, it's very difficult to get players to understand something that abstract. Uh, and it took a lot of iteration and uh, polishing and, and tuning and stuff to, to get them to understand it. And in the end, it was still too hard. So we actually made a pass on the game to uh, reduce the difficulty of every hacker puzzle in the game. Plus, I left an Easter egg in the hacker. Oh, did you? I did. And I'm going to tell everybody about it right now. Because it's so subtle that I don't think anyone would ever find this ever. Okay. But, but I was instructed, because the hacker puzzles were so hard for people, I was instructed that I needed to put auto-tuning in the puzzles. So every time you fail the puzzle, the puzzle gets easier. Uh, just by, you know, by one unit of difficulty, right? Okay. Uh, and I hated this idea. Like, this was before I had come to, to love uh, dynamic difficulty tuning. I thought, <laughs> I thought it was a horrible idea that it was, you know, you were robbing the player of uh, his, the victory he deserved, right? Uh, right, because with one thing players love, it's beating their head against the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they love it. More than they anything else. They can't get else. enough of it. <laughs> so it, in my kind of wrongheadedness, I was really, uh, I was really against this mechanic, right, uh, of, uh, of tuning, auto-tuning the game. So what I did was I said, okay, fine, I'm going to do it because one of the owners of the company and, you know, my boss is telling me to do it, but I'm not going to like it, right? That's a pretty good reason to do something. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a, a whole suite of reasons to do something. Uh, it's like, I want to keep my job. Yeah, of course I'm going to do that. But uh, uh, what I did because I wanted, to, I wanted to have the pure hacker experience available to people. So if you crouch on a hacker pad before you activate the puzzle, you'll get the full difficult version. Oh wow! Really? Yeah, yeah. That's not so much of an Easter egg as much as it seems like punishment. <laughs> it, maybe it's a little bit punishing, but like if uh, you don't know what's going on, like that, there's some player out there who is really bad at the hacker, but for some reason loves crouching at hacker pads, <laughs> and he's just like, "What the fuck is with this hacker?" <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a dick move, but still, I wanted it there, Tony. I wanted it there, and uh, uh, but the 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 upside to the player is normally you can't replay these, but if you want to replay them, oh, they took it out. Oh. Oh. Well, the original idea was if you wanted to replay them, you could crouch on the pad and do it, but it looks like that's not in there anymore. That makes me sad. Did you uh, did you report that Easter egg in the final? Tell me of all the Easter eggs you put in the game email. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I, I honestly don't remember. Those, that's always my favorite email at the end of the project. Oh, you know what, though? We, we didn't have that yet. Oh, did we not? No, hot coffee hadn't happened yet. Oh. <laughs> so we were still allowed to put whatever we wanted in. And without telling anybody. Those are the best parts at this point. Where every time, every time a game wraps up at this point, you get the email from the owner... Gosh. That's just like, all right, I'm not going to necessarily tell you to take anything out, but you need to tell me everything that you put in. Yeah, just, you know, to to avoid lawsuits and all right. that. Right, or at least show. in case we do get sued, at least we see it coming <laughs> and can prepare. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it's gone. That's really sad. Uh, I don't have anything else to add about the the Easter egg thing. Um, well, let's talk more about the hacker then. Let's just talk about the hacker. Okay. So, uh, there were a few goals that I had in coding the hacker. Okay. Uh, so, for one thing, uh, if and anyone who watched the last series will remember that I also coded the electrolyzer in Ratchet and Clank 2. And setting up the electrolyzer puzzles was really hard. Like, it would take... Oh, god damn. Uh, setting up the electrolyzer puzzles took hours. They were just bug-prone, bug really hard-to-set-up puzzles, and I didn't like that. So I, so for this time, one of my big coding goals was to make it so that uh, authoring a hacker puzzle was an incredibly easy thing to do. So basically, all you had to do to author a hacker puzzle was place it in the level. And then that, 
It would gener it would automatically randomly generate you a brand new hacker puzzle. Uh, and so all you'd have to do is play the hacker puzzle, see if you liked it, and if you did, you could just go in and set a PVAR and say, freeze this hacker puzzle, don't ever change it, and then that's it. It was done, right? It's not bad. And if you wanted to, you could, in, in engine, go in and play with a debug menu, uh, which is available in the Insomniac Museum, uh, to, to, you know, to, to change the values and make your own puzzles. So, uh, once I actually had the coding done for the gadget, setting up each individual one was trivial. I was very proud of it. That's pretty good. I have to give it to you. That's pretty good. I, I wish I'd come up with the idea all on my own, but, uh, I, I stole the interface from Peter's, uh, uh, infiltrator implementation that he did in ah, Ratchet 2. Right. So he, he made them so that they were really easy to set up, and I was really envious of it, so I was like, I'm gonna do my next one that way. So I wish I could have thought of it, but yeah, it was, uh, it turned out to be a huge time saver. Totally worth the effort. Like, I think each, it's, it's, it's all available in the museum, but each puzzle has maybe ten variables that you can play with that completely change the feel of it. So are you happy with the way the hacker turned out? Oh yeah, I love the hacker. It's it's one of the one of the things I'm the most proud of in this game. Uh, did you did you like these? I don't remember. Uh yeah, I like them. Like they're fun. I mean, I think they're. This is one of those ones that are very weird. That um, the easier puzzles are way less fun than the more difficult puzzles. Oh, like the ones the testers came up with. Yeah, I think it's it's a weird thing. Is that these scale in a very interesting way in that when they're easy they're actually not very fun at all because it's not it's it's trivial when it's easy you see that's what i was saying tony that's what i was saying <laughs> more difficult is more better uh, there I, are some thing there are some sort of puzzles that sort of scale that way and it's uh, i wish i knew the formula that would allow something to scale up that way. But I, <laughs> I don't think I've figured it out yet. And I don't think a lot of people have figured it out yet. Yeah, it's 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 tough. I mean, you figure it, uh, you figure it out by playtesting. But yeah, I also wish that I knew the formula for it. It's funny. We were just talking about, uh, we were just talking about Diablo right before we started up this podcast. Oh, because, you know, why wouldn't we talk about Diablo? And I just got, <laughs> and I just got to the point in the game where the, uh, the battles have just, scaled up dramatically All right. in terms of the number of enemies that they throw at you. Mm -hmm. And it got exponentially more fun <laughs> at this point. Because I basically walk in and I just become surrounded by enemies and I'm just clicking like mad and things are exploding everywhere and all my guys punching and my health bar is going up and down like crazy. And I'm like, this is awesome! This game is amazing! <laughs> but if you play Diablo and you're just punching one guy at a time, like that's dumb and nobody likes doing that and that's what nobody plays diablo for that reason but it's another one of those games that scales up incredibly well and the more things you start putting on there the more fun it gets and you can just keep doing that forever just constantly adding more and more and more and make it more difficult and the game just gets better and better and better and better just it, like the hacker puzzles just like the hacker puzzles. you know it tony I, I like to think that diablo stole their difficulty ramping from the hacker puzzles <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I think we're done with the Phoenix. It's time to go to Dax, and uh, I think that's going to be another episode. Uh, okay, let's just let's cut this episode off here then. That that means though that it's time to say goodbye. It is, and that's always a sad time. Tony, Do you have your goodbye song? Oh yeah, you know I think uh, I'm going to have you say goodbye. You know, do the goodbye message, and over it, I'm going to put some Mister Rogers music. Mr. Rogers, wow. Yeah, like, you know when he puts his sweater back on and, like, uh, takes the dress shoes off and puts them yeah. outside? Yeah, I'm going to play that. So All right, so I'm going to tone back my energy for this one. Though. Yeah, yeah, get real. Just, so it like, it, just channel Fred Rogers. Go for it. So, for a Ratchet and Clank, up your arsenal with all the commentary. I am Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And we'll see you next time, children. Yes, we will. Let's make the most nice. That was actually really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Uh, I think it was for the best. Okay, well, there you go.